Sounds like it's time for 60 Minutes. But it's not. It's Sunday morning. Have a piece of toast. We're off to the Toaster Collectors Convention. They call it Octoasterfest. Whoever thought toasters would go this far? A lot of people, you know, you collect what? There's some beautiful craftsmanship in some of them toasters. I call them monuments to the breakfast table, basically. This, to this toast right here would really clean up nicely. Ken Huggins is a major collector. This is just part of his agglomeration. Who knew toasters could look so good? This is the first American produced uh, toaster. We call it a percher. It's a General Electric. Many are antiques dating from the dawn of electric toasting, around 1908. And while this thing is glowing red hot, you have to pick the piece of bread up and turn it over the other way, which is a could be disastrous. There must be a trick to it. It's got to be a trick to it. You have to be fast. <laughs> from perchers to pinchers. One of the ideas that was really a breakthrough in, in toasters was being able to turn a piece of toast over. To floppers and swingers. Put the toast in the basket and turn the crank. <laughs> and as a result, it turns itself to the other side. The toaster mirroring the cultural and design history of the 20th century. And with the advent of interest in club sandwiches, you begin to see a toaster that would toast three slices of bread. The quest to build a better toaster attracted some of our greatest minds. Like the guy who invented the light bulb. These are basically the items that Edison made, called Evercraft, and they're very extremely well-made, a very durable sort of thing. And when sliced bread was invented in the 20s, toast took off, popping up, dropping down, and spilling out the sides. It just kicks out on the side. Toasters came into the modern age and offered a glimpse of the toast of tomorrow. This is a Magamix. It's an infrared toaster. Just in case you're going on a trip, this is a travel toaster. And so you plug this into your cigarette lighter. We have a toaster that has an FM radio in it. <laughs> to house his entire collection of more than 1,100 toasters, Ken had to construct an outbuilding. More toasters. More, uh, yeah. Are you trying to cut back? Uh, yes. You, got, you can accumulate things you don't need if you're but, not careful. But it's not. it's not working, is it? No. Cutting back. No, not, not real well. <laughs> <laughs> Ken and his wife Cordelia hosted this year's convention in Columbia, South Carolina, with toaster collectors arriving from throughout the country, happy to be among their own kind. It's amazing. Just amazing. Well, this one here is just, yeah, it drives me crazy. Were you surprised that there were other people out there collecting toasters? Pleasantly. <laughs> you, didn't, you didn't feel like you had some affliction. Feel better about your disorder, <laughs> yes. He'd know. Ken is a psychiatrist. At the convention, I was surprised to see hundreds of toasters. But no toast. Yeah, we can make toast. I've got some. Brought my bread. Okay. okay. Jim Barker fired up a 1923 model. Now these will take about uh, about 40 seconds aside. This is the toaster vulture group. We're after the bread chill. Most Australia conventioneers were there to buy and sell. This toaster is brand new. There'd been a feeding frenzy when Jim arrived with cardboard boxes full of rare toaster treasures. We got the string tag, the instruction card. The instructions how to use a toaster in a Saturday evening post ad. Amidst all the wheeling and dealing, there were seminars. A quick buff, and uh, it's pretty. I mean, it's, it's protected. It leaves a little finish on it. You don't and have awards. Thank you, Some collectors went home with coveted blue ribbons. So you bought okay. something today? Yes, I bought this. It's, uh, Richard Larison went home with this jewel box toaster to add to the 1,000 he already has at his small appliance museum in Missouri. So what would you have to bid to get that? $1,500. And I think it was a steal at that price. I paid $5,000 for toasters. And they say, why would you do it? I said, show me another one. How do you put a price on one-of-a-kind toaster? It's the only one like it in the whole world. <laughs> You 
you look at them as artwork? Absolutely. Art that makes breakfast. Try asking Mona Lisa to get off her butt for the first time in 500 years and make you a piece of toast. 